We will now move to the first speaker in this program. I would like to invite Michael Shmilov, worker number two in a company called Viber, that you all know. A company that was sold to the Japanese Rakuten in February 2014 for the incredible number of $900 million. Michael was worker number three in the company, and his lecture tells us we need to speed. Speed, speed, speed. Michael Shmilov, please. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. So, hi everyone. Uh, so, I was asked to speak uh, the most popular language out there, so I'll speak bad English if I may. Um, Based on what I just heard, which reminds me, I, I was raised in Rishon, and uh, it's, it's, Rishon is a true startup when you think about it from the early days. And as a first startup, I think we need to be much better in uh, being friendly to startup, being friendly to iTech, and I'm happy with starting a bigger project about it, because all the great talents uh, that in our iTech that coming from Rishon need to go outside of the city. And we have a great opportunity in the next five years because the traffic is really bad. And I think it will motivate people to stay more in the city. So let's use it. <laughs> uh, OK, so my name is Michael. I'm a CEO at Viber, formerly the head of product, um, which uh, is basically starting from design and doing everything about the application, what people experience, and that's what we did. Uh, Viber is uh, a service that freely allows our users to connect with their friends, um, whether it is, I, I, there is a clicker that can switch slides, or? Okay, so we we'll somehow switch. So, so we are five years old, and about uh, 664 million users in these five years managed to make free calls on Viber, send messages, make video calls, share files. They do it on multiple platforms, and um, we also have a, a today because we are more mature. We have features that meant to generate revenue for our company whether it is call terminations, whether it is virtual goods, and, and many others, and we uh, have many APIs and partnerships in place. So, uh, can you switch one, please? Okay, so uh, Viber today is about 309 uh, employees uh, that speak about 13 languages and spread over 10, 11 countries, actually, I don't count Israel, so 11 countries. And Israel is obviously our biggest uh, uh, office and surprisingly we picked the startup hub with the, the city that makes people to be very smart in terms of uh, every day they need to see how they need to find themselves a way to get to work, the way to get home. So we picked Nebrak, that's where our office is located. Uh, Nebrak actually, again, going back to comparison to Rishon, did a very interesting step. They decided that they turned a very uh, bad area in the city into something that will future become a high-tech zone, which called BBC. It's a neighborhood business center, so great for them. Uh, in uh, February 17th, 2014, Viber was acquired by Rakuten. Um, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what I managed to learn in these two years from Rakuten and kind of how to combine our startup nature with how a Japanese corporate company working today. It's a very unique corporate uh, company. Just to give you an example, in Japan, it's, uh, the language is Japanese, so they will speak it everywhere. Uh, in, in every company. So if in Israel we exchange emails in English, and it's a very common way in Japanese, it would be in Japanese. And they are at least true to about two years ago, there are only two companies there that decided to do something they call Englishization. So it means that the native language in the company will be English. One of them, uh, some of you may know, called Uniqlo. It's a fashion brand, and the other one is Rakuten. So that's what made it even possible for us to work with them. Uh, it's a company that started with commerce, ebooks. They are uh, very agile relatively to a corporate company. They grow into other businesses. They do uh, ebooks, a lot of uh, digital content, and they also acquired Viber to enable connect the different services and also uh, help them to grow globally outside of Japan. Uh, I, the CEO of Rakuten, his name is Hiroshi Mikitani, is a very interesting person. Uh, I think the third richest person of Japan. A uh, very uh, entrepreneur person, he's he founded this company, is constantly looking how to grow and change, and he is a person that came up with several principles. You can kind of switch faster, but it's always to improve, it's always to 
rethink what you're doing, find better ways to do it. And finally, the most interesting one for me was speed, 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 because for us, you know, when we came there the first time, it felt like a joke. So someone from the moment they acquired us will come every day and say, are, are you done? Are you done? I mean, what else? How, how much faster you can do it? But we slowly realized that it's more than that. And today I want to try to uh, share with you what we learned. So, so what it means, speed, speed, speed. So basically, uh, is it time to market, which is very common in, in the startup industry. It's how fast we launch the product from the moment we started working on it. Or is it about um, uh, launch it when it's still kind of in a prototype mode, you know, before it's finalized, before it's this, uh, pixel perfect, how we call it. Or is it the idea of, you know, develop fast, launch fast, fail fast, or... Uh, I'm, I'm personally, I, I, that's by the way, uh, every employee in the office have this uh, mask, which we found a joke, and after the picture they explain us it's because of the earthquake, you need to be able to immediately put it on your head. So luckily I didn't manage to face it in real time. There was no earthquake in this moment. So, in fact, my concern is that when the approach is always let's do faster things, let's launch quickly, let's prototype, sometimes we are so much in this you know, circle that we also fail faster. And I'm not sure that that's the right way to go always. Um, so, you know, the, the way I think we need to look at speed and what I refer to by speed, speed, it's to embrace speed. It took me time to learn this word. So, it's, you know, it's lechabek, it's to become friendly to the word speed, it's to understand that it's speed, it's something you need to kind of, it needs to become part of you. And, and what I mean by that, so, speed, the way I refer to it, it's, a con it's contained of two different aspects. The fun is, is velocity, and the second one is uh, agility, basically. Uh, so we can skip another one, please. So velocity stands for the, the rate of how fast we do things, how fast we, we manage to um, implement certain des uh, decisions we make. And this means in our world of startups, it's to less le have less meetings. Meetings take a lot of time, and you, know, you remember that meetings, it's a place to take decisions. It's not a place to do anything but that. So le have less of them. I'll skip the second one because it's clear, and I'll focus on it afterwards, but the last one, less people involved. And you know, as a company that grew from you know, five people to uh, 309, sometimes you have a meeting with eight people and it's so much not productive. And you realize that you never needed eight people in this meeting. It could be two, it could be three. And you need to re remind yourself constantly this thing because it makes you just work better. Um, the agility, which is a very fascinating topic and very close to our world, is actually about how fast you act after you made a decision. So, you know, in our life, it's relatively easy to make a decision, but it's much harder to do what you decided to, to, to do, to make. So, for example, if you decide, and I'm going to a negative topic, but you decide to fire a person, the decision was made a long time ago, but to implement it, you're starting to think about his family, about his needs, about what is the right time, who will replace his job. So, suddenly, making the decision happen takes a lot of time. I'm not saying fire faster, I'm saying think more. This guy, for me, is a great model. I don't know if you heard about Stuart Butterfield. So I think if we speak about entrepreneurs, if we speak about speed, decision-making, that's a good role model. This guy about, don't remember exactly, I think 11 years, start, uh, start, started a company, which was a gaming company, if we can switch one slide, please, called the Ludicrop, which was a multiplayer gaming company, enabling few people to play together. And it was together with the bubble of the high tech which exploded basically and it could not raise money. So he had to find another solution and he changed the company. So as part of the game, people needed to exchange photos and he took this piece of technology and make a Flickr out of it. So you all know Instagram, uh, less of you know Flickr, but Flickr was the early Instagram, let's call it like that. It was acquired by Yahoo. It was the first product that actually enabled sharing photo online, before Facebook, before anything else. He worked for several years in Flickr and then he left and he started another company. The guy is stubborn, so he started again multiplayer game company with the same idea and he called it Glitch. And it was worked better and by the way, he failed again and he made, again took some piece of technology and he made Slack out of it. Now if you have a startup, you know what Slack is. Slack is basically a communication or collaboration uh, platform for uh, developers and team members. And this company is the fastest growing company for businesses, business solution basically. They, their valuation today is about $3 billion. Some may say it's exaggerated, I will agree, <laughs> but at the same time, that's the evaluation, that's how they raise money today. And it's, it's quite amazing in my eyes. I, I tried to look for a quote from this guy to see how he does it, so he basically said I'm lucky. So we can't do much about luck, but I think it's a bit 
uh, to do nice to himself. Uh, I think he actually have what it takes to make a decision, implement it fast, and be good enough in his uh, choices. I also looked for another quote from him, and I found something nice. It's called, if we can switch one, please. It says, um, I had hippie parents, and I found it difficult to figure out how to re rebel against them. Well, it's, it's an interesting uh, aspect. So, unrelated, sorry. So, going forward, um, think to act. It's another very fundamental thing about speed. You know, we all were learning at our home, by our parents, at our school. Before you say something, think about it. And it kind of goes further to before you do something, think about it. And the, the, basically the approach is think to act. Before you, you know, think exactly and make all the plan, act, try. The best way to build a strategy, it's by trying. It's by having examples, it's by learning, having some sample data, having some attempts. Even failures uh, teach us about how better it is to plan our strategy. So think to act. It's, I'm saying it's a mistake, but you know, let's, let's not be too arrogant about it. It's not necessarily a mistake, but in this world of startups, you, you do need to be faster. So, skipping another one, please. Okay, so, um, also another one? Sorry, I don't have a way to switch them. So, I want to tell you an example of how we needed to face with this decision of launching faster before we are ready or waiting longer. So, we had... Uh, a decision to make whether we have we had a uh, calls feature uh, available on our product and we could either launch immediately or wait until we have messaging so we went to all the books of lean approaches and experiences and startups and we made a decision let's launch and we launched which was very good for us but what happened is that we got this amazing coverage uh, worldwide because you know we made calls basically approachable for people or uh, reachable and the title compared us to Skype, which is quite a great thing for a startup, and we were very happy about it. Only four months afterwards, we released the version with messaging, right? So we kind of completed our, what we imagine is the right product. As much as it was great, some will say that's what made Viber successful, that will help us to gain users. At the same time, it took us about three years for people to know that we have messaging and not only calls. Kind of first impression. We were compared to Skype competitor, flea calling app, anything, and today, since we're in Israel, you know exactly who took at the same dates the place of the messaging. So sometimes, lesson learned, you know. Uh, going forward, uh, perfection. So I started as a designer, so for me, pixel perfect is a very important thing. And it's very hard to understand that sometimes you need to go less perfect with your pixels. Sometimes you need to do things uh, more in kind of in a mock-up stages. But you can only do it if you want to continuously improve it afterwards. If you launch with it and then you're busy with other things, uh, it will not work because your product needs to become better all the time. So that's an example of our desktop application. The day we launch, which is a mock-up version basically, and today, which we continuously improve it. Yes, we didn't launch with a nice project. I will never be proud of this design. Uh, but it worked. People managed to try it. And by the way, the problems were much bigger than the pixels. There was problems with video calls, for example. So it was a very good attempt for us to learn uh, faster how to improve our product. Kaizen, it's something I learned in Japan. That's how they call uh, continuously improving something. So I will need to look at a bit there because the name uh, Masaki Imai is the guy who invented this. And Toyota was the first big global company to start working this way. It basically stands for you need to constantly in a certain irritation, improve something. There is many different interpretations to this. The translation is um, change good, so basically constantly improve. And I picked uh, like a few dots that I find them very critical. Um, first one is teamwork. That's how every startup starts. Then personal dis discipline. If you decided to do something, go, go with it. Don't stop every time, interrupt yourself. Uh, improve morale. You know, if people are negative, it won't work. And quality circle, I'll give you an example to this in a second, and suggestions for improvements. Always collect feedback, you know, that's the word for it. Uh, by the way, outside of Japan, it's known as a PDCA. Uh, so it stands for plan, do, check, and basically improve, act. Uh, and you do it in circle. Once you do it in circle, that's exactly what continuous improvement is. The next thing is about ready, steady, go. You know, when you learn to work very fast, it's very important you know where you're going. Because if you're making kind of even the slightest uh, bad direction, you find yourself in a completely different place very quickly afterwards. So set goals, KPIs, key performance indicators. Enable yourself and you know, look for bottlenecks. Where is the problems in the company? How I can improve it? And by the way, be transparent. If you have goals, share it with your team. Don't keep it to yourself. 
If you have certain numbers and metrics, share it with your team so they know what you're trying to achieve as a company. We're using the Pulse in Viber. It's an Israeli startup that came out out of uh, Wix, another great company. So try it. It's, it's local. Why not? They can even help you to... Uh, Finally, uh, I'll go back to the team for a second. As a startup, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, managers, we sometimes so much focus on our technology and our product because we think we're building a technology company. Not really, we're building a team that need to deliver technology products, so focus on the team. That will give usually all the, by the way, every VC will tell you that they invest in the people and not in the idea, and it's, th that's how it works. And finally, when I say team, uh, this is our company. We managed to bring all the 300 people in the same place just so they can meet each other because we had people that worked for almost five years and they never met. And it, it was very dramatic change for us. Since then, people collaborating much more. They uh, connect better. They, they need to speak less to make a decision and execute it. And hire for speed. You, you can find Speedy Gonzalez as a, I don't know if he's into high tech, but there are certain roles you need to find that help you to make things faster. It's not necessarily a person that works faster. It's a person that's more agile, that can sometimes uh, feel how things can be faster. We always question the process, you know, it never agrees with certain things that are given. And of course, the most important thing is about love. You have to love what you do. If you don't love it, all the rest is bullshit. Um, so that's my main point, and thank you. <laughs>